Shalom, Chavarim, Shalom. Yes, so did Adam, according to the Bible, according to the scripture, the Hebrew scriptures, but according to the Bible, even the translation that we have received, according to the Bible, did Adam, that's referred to often as the first man, called Adam, and from low degrees to high degrees, we're looking at the translation, KJV, starting out the KJV, King James Version. Did Adam have a mother? Who was Adam's father? Did Adam have a father and a mother? That's the question right here in this vlog right here, here, here. Now, many of the Habarim, many of the fellow disciples, the Talmudim, the Dekamazamorit, you know, the Talmudim, that's the word for disciples. Many of the fellow disciples, no doubt, they've checked out some of our earlier um, reasonings, lectures, teachings, tutorings, going through the scripture. Already know that we've have addressed this, even in Torah readings and feedings. We often, you know, make reference to it. So if ones have been, you know, diligently, you know, paying attention, one has heard the truth. In other words, the answer to the question that we've just asked right here. But we haven't gone into like a full or full articulation as we like to do right here. But first of all, we like to give thanks. I give thanks to the Almighty, you know seeing that the consciousness among our people at home and abroad is is growing growing in grace gradually we've heard even some other of the more popular um you know youtubers and content creators and lecturers or ones that have different ones on you know you know some of the other platforms out there in the black consciousness in the bible there's been a lot and a lot of reasonings on the Bible, as the once lost now found, black and brown sheep of the Beit Yisrael, as we seek to awaken, rise and shine, right? This is like the great awakening, the consciousness awakening. And we know it's a conscious awakening by the questions. Many times the questions that we start to ask. How many of y'all probably recall that, you know, when some of us used to go to church or if you've gone to church before and, you know, as a, as a young child, young well, as a young male, a young man, and some of y'all as, you know, young woman, you know, going to church, you may have asked some questions. I know I've asked some questions and we was told, you know, we being smart or we think we smart or we too smart. You know, there's been a discouragement to asking, some will say asking the hard questions and ones have been discouraged in asking you know, and then asking the real questions and discourage, right, in asking the hard questions. But now, when I'm speaking of the consciousness growth, I'm seeing that ones and ones now. It's either that ones are checking out, you know, we don't get a large, you know, a large viewing, generally speaking. On some of the other sites and the other channels, yes, it can fluctuate, you know, all depends on the season and the video, you know, and also those who are, you know, supportive and also repost so forth and so on. But there's some popular sites out there and often it's brought to my attention that some of the same or similar, you know, some of the same or similar content, right, that or subject matters that we have addressed on some of the bigger sites, you know, or the sites that, you know, get on average a couple of thousand more views that's in the black sphere the black sphere you know like the black sector i think they call the black sector you know and the black consciousness sector you know and i heard ones and ones reasoning on this and i'll just point this out right here you know <laughs> um it was uh captain Tazariak and jj was it seven thousand i think it's seven thousand they were going back and forth right isha shelley Right, um, Ishti or Seti, you know, I and I, Isha, I and I, woman, and I, wife, she was checking it out, and I was, you know, here on the first the first day, you know, the Yom HaRishon, here on the first day, you know what the first day is, they call it Sunday, but in the first day, you know, just was chilling, and I heard, you know, this conversation going on about Adam and Adam's father and Adam's mother. I said, Chan, they're talking about this? <laughs> About time they're talking about this. Now, as we said, the Chavarim, I and I fellows know that, you know, we have addressed this, 
you know, even before. Now, if you hadn't checked it out, well, therefore, check it out right here, here, here. So, question, question, question. Who was Adam's... Okay, first question is, did Adam, according to the Bible, and according to the KJV, the King James, from low degrees to high degrees, according to the King James Version, right? This is what most ones and ones know, although we're going to have to get to the roots, right? Get to the groundation, the foundation. We're going to have to go down to the groundation, the foundation. That's the biblical Hebrew, as his Matthew says, in Mesodata, we, uh, right? that foundational language. But from low degrees to high degrees, basic, you know, basic steps, right? According to KJV and according to what is written and translated, and we can understand basically, did Adam, did Adam have a father and mother? Did Adam have father and mother? That's the first question. Second question, who was, if we, if we say yes, some might say no, right? And therefore ones that respond no, there's a different response to those who say no. Right? People say, no, Adam didn't have a mother. Adam, you know, was the first man. And that's how they read the, the scripture, the Bible. Well, Robeno, right? Raboni, Rabboni, Yeshua, HaMoshiach, right? Yeshua the Messiah, Yeshua HaNotri. He basically says to us to take heed to how we read. Take heed to how you read. You know, because sometimes people think like, oh, somebody's playing a trick or whatever. But you might be just tricking yourself because you're not paying attention or taking due diligence paying heed to how you read so sometimes you know if you ever read something and you read it and you thought that was saying one thing and then somebody said no 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 and you say yeah that's what it's saying and then somehow you read it again and you say oh yeah you're right i hope ones and ones are able to see the light right because once you see the light what you're gonna do <laughs> get up stand up so here so adam did Adam have a father and mother? That's the first question here. We, we should actually do this in little mini vids. Ones and ones have some have comment and then said that, you know, keeping some of the videos a little bit shorter right here. So maybe this will be the first one right here. Did Adam have father and mother? Adam, according to the Bible, KJV, mainly Bible, right? Did Adam have father and mother? Yes, no. All right? Yes, no. Ken, all right? Ken, Ken, Khan. Ken, right? Or law. Ken or law. Im or law. Yes or no. Right? Now, of course, one's like, well, what's the answer? What's the answer? <laughs> Did you answer? At least make your answer. Say yes if you believe so. Say no if you believe so. Right? The real punishment is like one's not even giving in an attempt. From what you, how does it seem to you? Did, does it seem that Adam had mother and father now our response to this question would be based on what we know and based on what we have been shown through the holy spirit to be the truth and what we can prove what adam <laughs> what adam are you speaking about what adam which which adam are you talking about all right are you speaking about adam right genesis genesis chapter 1 or are you speaking about Adam Genesis chapter 2 or are you speaking about the last Adam according to the Brit Hadasha and the last Adam according to the Brit Hadasha New Testament Adeskidan would be Yeshua Hanot or Yeshua HaMoshiach Jesus Christ or Jesus Christ so which Adam which Adam are you speaking just Adam in the general sense because Adam in the Hebrew also is one of the words used to refer to man man actually in the lower sense of man because there's two senses of man according to the scripture right two senses of man right where one of the psalms where it says um take um take heed like all ye peoples both both um low and high rich and poor together you might have heard that in the translation kjv you know um both low and high it says bene adam Right and B'nai Ish, Ish. So Ish, Ish, I S H, Ish, is also one of the ways of referring to man. And even Adam, right? Even Adam in the Hebrew Bible. When I say the Hebrew Bible, we're gonna go from the KJV, what you're used to, 
what you're familiar with, but that was translated, as it says in the King James Version, translated out of, you know, the former languages. What does it say in the KJV? And this is one reason why things get lost in translation. And many of the, the debates that goes on, even among some of the Hebrews, Israelites, people, black people, especially our people over here, as we're trying to grasp and get a better comprehension on, well, what is the truth? It says the Holy Bible containing the Old and New Testaments translated out of the original tongues. What? Original tongues. So we're going to then consult with the original tongues and see whether the translation is consistent, right, and accurate. And with the former translations, diligently compared and revised by his majesty's special command this is what's in the official you know kjv 1611 from such and such time they took that out of many of the later printings of it right and this was appointed to be read in the churches the authorized king james version cum uh, um privilegio cambridge at the university press right here to the most high and mighty prince james by the grace of god king of great britain france and ireland defender of the faith this is what we're starting out with brothers and sisters right the kjv right the kjv to show also how some things have gotten lost in translation right so which adam are you speaking about right which adam are you talking about because we have genesis chapter one where it says let us make man in our image and after our likeness and then it says male and female he created them right that's genesis chapter one and then we have genesis chapter two right where it speaks about man right being formed out of the dust right of the ground out of the dust of the ground mm -hmm. and then we have the same adam in from genesis 2 Right? It speaks about um, man leaving his father and mother. Interesting. That one who we are told, speaking about Adam, he did not have father and mother. I mean, don't folks tell us that Adam did not have father and mother? This is what we're told. Right? In Christianity, in white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christianity. Right? Because we have to, you know, address who it is that had told us these things so from christianity and bible belief and church going and all this out in the west over here over these 400 years is what we've been told to believe we've been told that well adam was the first human being he was the first man they said the first man was adam once again we have to ask the question which adam are you talking about which adam are you talking about you said you know adam adam you know adam 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 which Adam are you talking about? Because if you read in the King James Version of the Bible and you go through Genesis chapter 1, you don't see Adam there. You don't see Adam in Genesis chapter 1. According to the King James translation, in the translation that you're reading, do you read and study Hebrew? First, first and foremost, let's not play no games. People like to play these games. Our people, especially our people, right? The ones lost. Beta Yisrael, Beta Israel. Right? Even many of these so-called Negroes, N-words that don't want to call themselves Israelites, say there's something else. They're they're Kemetic or they are they are African. Even though these terminologies, especially African, wasn't even used in the past, but people try to go back to that. This is the confusion. So stop playing these games. When we read in the King James Version of the Bible, because we're speaking, we're in the English-speaking world, we're in these latter days and times of the Gentiles, of the nations. It's the Anglo-American nations that rule in this world system. The British and America is like, like Upper and Lower Egypt. You know, we're in the spiritual Egypt. They got pyramids and, and, and Freemasonry, and they, they love this Egyptology. In the system of white people running this world system, it's all connected. It's all connected. Yeah, back in in the past was black folks so forth and so on but that's not the reality that we're dealing with today and we're talking about the times of the gentiles let's stop playing games folks like to play these games see they like to go in and out of time but we're looking at the time here in genesis chapter one and we're looking at the point of reference that most folks got and the point of reference that most most of us have over here in the english-speaking world especially with the 400 year world Right of the Beta Israel and the Americas and the Caribbean, we have the KJV, the King James Version, and in Genesis chapter one, the name Adam does not appear in the translation. 
Where do we get Adam? According to the Western Gentile, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christianity over the past 400 years, right, rising up out of what they call what the Church of Sardis, Sardis in Revelation, speaking about the Protestant Reformation and the KJV version. The first place that we get Adam, the first place that we get Adam from the English perspective is in Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. So the first Adam that appeared, okay, let's prove this. Let's just prove this right here, here, here. Okay, we're going to have to just take this off right here because we're about to get into, uh-oh, let's get out of that right there just to answer the question of, well, you know, because there's another question that comes up. Well, did Adam have, did Adam have a, did Adam have a mother, right? Could we first of all ask, well, who was Adam's father? Okay, right there. If you can read the Hebrew, we kind of gave you a little hint right there. But let's go right here and let's put here, take it off the Hebrew keyboard. Let's put right here, Adam, right? Let's put Adam, Adam, right? So the first place in English that we find Adam, look at this. Here we're looking up Adam and we, we, we're using the, the, the My Sword software. So we already have it kind of all set up for our studies and use and also for the tutorials. It's like a tutorial or one could say a teaching, right? But here, a tutorial right here. And we put Adam and it says Adam appears in the KJV Bible, Old and New Testament, 66 or so books that is, is reading right here, right? Because reading both the English and it's also reading the... Um, the Hebrew of the Old Testament and the Koine Copto Greek of the New Testament. So in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, Adam is there. <laughs> At least part of that, but you, you see it doesn't show up in the translation, right? In Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. So we push it, push it, push it, push it real good, right? So here we're in Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, and it says, And out of the ground... KJV says the Lord God or Yahweh Elohim formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the ear and brought them to Adam. Not, not to, not unto, but to Adam to see what he will call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So here in Genesis chapter 2 verse 19 is the first time in the KJV, in the King James Version, that we have Adam. So when we ask the question, well, did Adam have a father and mother? Did Adam have father and mother? Did Adam have father and mother? And anyone now honestly seeking to address this based on the evidence and the point of reference that we're talking about the Bible, the King James Version of the Bible. And I keep emphasizing the King James Version because to my fellow Hebrew um, scholars and students and the Talmud, Talmudim, well, you already done know. You probably already know where we're going with this. But this is also to help those who don't have that, 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 that tool, that, that skill. Right, that ability, that, 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 that gift of the Ruach HaKadosh, or the Holy Spirit at the present time, to go there linguistically as well, to help them, to let them understand, well, why there's all these silly questions that we are asking each other, but it's mostly based on the white Anglo-Saxon, the white man's Christianity. We're asking a lot, but we have to undo that. We have to undo a lot of the things that we were led to believe. Is that really true? Is it really true what we heard? Well, actually, even studying the scripture, here's where I found out that the Bible actually does say. But this is what the past of the preachers, 400 years, was trying to make us believe, make us be naive. So Adam shows up the first place. Most ones from a Western Gentile Christianity Bible view shows up first time Adam two places the first verse Genesis chapter 2 verse 19 in Genesis chapter 2 verse 19 but now here's what we seek to say in the Hebrew <laughs> in the Hebrew this is not is this the first time this is not the first time that Adam appears in the Hebrew 
Now, let us recall that the King James Version of the Bible says the Holy Bible containing the Old and New Testaments translated out of the original tongues and with the former translations diligently. That's the key word there. Diligently compared and revised it said at his majesty's special command and this is this is the 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 front the front page of the authorized king james version this is the popular version of 400 years this is what we have to deal with mm -hmm. this is what we have to be able to cipher we got to cipher we got to sort this so here we're sorting this we're sorting it by asking the question did adam have father and mother that Adam that Adam of the King the KJV Bible <laughs> right have a father and mother our answer finally give our answer we'll say yes yes Adam had father yes Adam had mother now what's the proof now the proof may be a little bit challenging from the English Especially if we just limited 66 books, because there's more than just 66 books. Even the first KJV, it had many of the apocryphal, you know, books. And we also have books that are called pseudepigraphal books, books that are called lost books of the Bible, books that are questioned as to whether they were inspired. And they're mostly questioned by white Anglo-Saxon Protestant counterfeit Christianity. Because what happened is that they first had like the 66 books. These are books they had. Then they found out that the people before them, the Jews, the Yehudi, the first Christians, Nazarenes, they had these other scriptures, but they had already formed the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, their lies, their, their counterfeit religion, right? And then these other books started to shed more light on that counterfeit religion, and they basically said that these other books were not inspired. Therefore, from Malachi to Matthew, there's this big gap. Is about like over a four, did you know did you know there's a 400 year gap between Malachi and Matthew? I hope some other brothers and sisters on some of the other popular black consciousness, you know, chat and debate sites pick up on this so that at least the people can understand that between Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, and Matthew, the first book of the New Testament, it's like a 400 year gap. That means if you try to understand, well, how did we get from the last book in the Old Testament, according to King James Version, Malachi, and then we end up with Matthew? Like, like th make this make sense. You cannot make that make sense without having the other testimonies and testimonials, which are called today the apocryphal books. You got to have those other books there, like, 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 like Maccabees. Right? That, that whole period could be called the Maccabee, the 400 year Maccabee period. You need to have that there. You see, in the Old Testament, you don't have what they call the feast, uh, festival of dedication or Hanukkah. You don't have that overtly in the translation. I say overtly. I have to emphasize because it's there in the Old Testament, the Hebrew Old Testament, but it doesn't quite, it gets lost in translation. Right? But in the New Testament, we have the feast of dedication and it was winter. It's speaking about Hanukkah. Well, how are the Yehudi, the Jews, the Yehudim in the New Testament, including Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? Yeshua HaNotri, Robeinu, how is Rabboni observing this particular holiday, right? That without the apocryphal books and the Maccabee, the books of the Maccabees, right? The 400 year, filling that 400 year gap. We have no idea. It seems like something they just made up, but we can understand how Hanukkah becomes significant only when we have those lost books of the Bible, forgotten books of Eden, only when we have these apocryphal and pseudepigraphal books, only when we fill in that gap. So counterfeit Christianity has taken out a lot of books, right, from popular usage because it caused too much problems, right, with their counterfeit Christianity, right? And even, if we may say, with their counterfeit Judaism, some things that are, have been counterfeited, right, amongst the latter day. Remember, we live in the latter days and times, right, of a system that have been going on for at least 400 years, for at least, even though it's based on older systems, right? But here, 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 Adam, this is where Adam is found in the KJV. And it's imp important to make this distinction here. So... Any question that's mentioning Adam, some people say, well, well, in Genesis chapter one, it's talking about man. It's talking about man in the version you're reading, but it doesn't say Adam. 
and we can prove to you that everywhere man appears in the translation, the underlying Hebrew word is not always Adam. Sometimes the word could be Adam. Sometimes it could be Ish. Yes, Ish. Right? Ish. <laughs> ish. Not Ish, but Ish. Right? Sometimes it can be Gever, Gever, Gever. Right? Sometimes it can be Enosh, Enosh, Enosh. Right? So there are a few different words. We just point out a couple of words right there, right? For man. It doesn't always have to be Adam, right? So every place that we find man in the English, if we start to look Hebraically speaking to the underlying Hebrew text, a Masoretic text, a text that according to the KJV version, it was translated out of the original languages, right? So for the Old Testament, the original Hebrew, we find that every place we find man in translation is not always the same Hebrew word. Sometimes it is Adam. It is Aleph Dam, Adam. But sometimes it is Ish. Sometimes it is Enosh. Enosh in the more Hebrew Western Semitic sense or Anash, Anash in the Eastern Semitic sense. Sometimes it's Geber, Geber, or some would say Geber, Geber, Geber. All right? So there's a couple of different words right there. We just want to point that out because one is guessing unless one is actually going to the hebrew one is guessing so here let's point out well first of all who was adam's right let's answer this question like this well who was adam's father let's prove that adam had a father should we go to the verse where adam it says therefore shall leave father and mother and should we should we go to that particular verse right there? All right. Therefore shall leave, which is Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. This is what we have concerning the named Adam in the KJV version. The named Adam in the KJV version the first Adam that is named in the Western Gentile Bibles is Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. This is where a lot of the confusions amongst the WASP Christianity, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christianity came in. A lot of the different denominations, why you have a lot of different, they're all looking at the same Bible, but have a whole bunch of, I mean, not just various, maybe little differences here or there, but they have extreme differences that all come out of the reading the same KJV because of the inconsistency, right, of the translations in many of the key places when we ask many of these key questions. And this is why when we were like children and we asked certain questions like, Mama, Mama, Dada, Dada, Nana, Nana, you know, who was, um, uh, who, who was, who was Adam's father? Some would say God was his father. Well, well who was Adam's mother? <laughs> They usually won't say God was his mother. They could. You potentially could say that. Like he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and male and female. He created them. So if he said, let us, there's a us there, make man in our, there's an our there. And male and female must mean that in Elohim from the beginning, there is the feminine aspect. But then again, in basic human terms right dna scientific terms the male has both the x and y chromosome that's interesting the male has x does it so it would seem as though scientifically here in the scripture there is a consistency with the hebrew we can say the hebrew science the da'at or the hebrew one might even say theology so to speak but what the hebrew scripture is saying in genesis and also what the so-called empirical or the scientific evidence also demonstrates the woman so if elohim was she right if god was she where would he come from because in she she only has xx think about that for a moment see a lot of folks that don't think about this they get all caught up in you know the isms you know feminism sexism schism isms and schisms and then we look at the reality of it that if god might right, say if elohim as people say well well 
God, how you say he? Well, God, she. Okay, that's cute. That's, that's very cute. That's nice. That's very nice to say that nowadays. We live in a nice time. We live in a time of the Laodicean time, lukewarm. A lot of the lukewarm folks, they say, oh, well, well, God, she. Okay, that's cute. But that's not really even scientific. Because now if we superimpose that on Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, and say Elohim is she, if we say that, if we say that, right, created man in her right image, right, her own image, and in the image of Elohim created she, right, him, or if created she, her, there would only be female and female. <laughs> created she, them. You don't think about that. Because you're not really putting together the science. The science, first of all, you need to have the science of the Hebrew scriptures. Most barely have the science of the KJV translation. That's what they're hitting us up with. They, they're coming at us with the, the, the pseudoscience of the KJV translation. I say pseudoscience because they're their own confused ideas from reading a translation that allegedly was translated out of the original tongues with the other former translations diligently compared and revised. Have you done the same? H have you diligently, right? Have you diligently um, compared, right? Have you diligently looked into what you believe or what you're trying to make believe is what the Bible is saying? So there is that scientific aspect that people want to dismiss because they say the Bible is not scientific and then they'll bring out a translation, KJV translation, all right? And then they will get caught up in popular, you know, in popular um, denomination, denomination, like everybody's not, everybody now is like all feministic, you know, feminine, you know, like they say, well, God is she, that's cute. I, it's very, it's, it's a nice, it's very nice. You know, a lot of the women going to smile at you. They're going to be like, yes, you know, God, he, it doesn't have to be he all the time. Yeah. But you, you see, I don't have, we don't have, you should not have <laughs> penis envy. <laughs> you know, whether you're a male or a female, right? But, you know, you know, a male may, but definitely this penis envy thing, you know, if you don't talk about it. I mean, but then the, you have some male men out there who have um, vagina envy. If they didn't have it, then they didn't, they wouldn't be doing what they, what they, what, what they be doing, right? So this idea of God being a she, I was going to save this for a whole video in and of itself, but I'm dropping it here, right here, here, here. If God was a she, scientifically speaking, in the female, in the woman, there is X and X chromosome. There is no Y or male chromosome. So therefore, the statement in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 is categorically and even scientifically true, both of Elohim, Right of the true good, the true God of the powers, the God powers, the the God powers of the Hebrews. We can say Elohim in Genesis Bereshi chapter one. Right, Genesis chapter one verse twenty-seven, when it says, "So Elohim created man in his own image." Right, it should really be in his image. The own. You'll notice that italicizations in KJV version. The words that are italics don't really appear in the Hebrew. So reading. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 more correctly Elohim created man in his image in the image of Elohim created he him male and female created he them is scientifically correct why because here it is positing that Elohim is he right and people say oh what about she is sexist so no no the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christianity was sexist Protestant whitewashed Christianity was sexist. White people and their, their isms and schisms was sexist. And it just so happens that we have a sexist perversion right, of the scripture because we have gotten it from or through them over the past 400 years. So now, as we're beginning to awaken to the half of the story we didn't know, and we recognize that, whoa, 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 whoa. we're the children of Israel. These things happen to us. This is speaking of us. This is our story. This is our narrative. Facts. So Elohim is posited as being he. Right? Now people say, well, he, where is she? She 
is in he. <laughs> well, again, she is in he. And I'm using the basic science. If we're going to make this a scientific argument, right? Male, the male has X and Y. And the female, the woman, the female have X and X. Right? And, and we're saying according to the pattern. Now, of course, there are exceptions to the rule, right? This is where we get a lot of the different um, alterations, uh, derivations, diversions, you know, other things that might be clinically listed as, um, quote, defective, end quote, because there is a, a pattern. They say that the exception to the rule, the exception to the rule proves the rule. I don't know if you heard that before, but the exception proves the rule. So that we have a rule. This is the rule. So it is it is like the rule 90 something percent of the time. But there's exceptions to it. But the exceptions show that the rule is the rule because the exception. Think on it if you can. If you don't get it, hopefully, you know, we can go over it again. But the exception proves the rule. So he. Right. He created right man. And when it says male and female. If there was a male in the beginning, genetically speaking, right, that was created in an image after the likeness of the Hebrew God power known as Elohim, could we then have a female come forward if we just have a male at the beginning, scientifically speaking? Yes, of course, yes. Do you believe that man, you know, that from a man's rib, right, the woman came? Well, that's, that's kind of like a poor translate or questionable translation depends on your perspective because if you only know rib like like um you know what they call it uh rib uh what, what kind of ribs people be eating um i don't really i never really was into that but you know like the beef ribs or the you know these kind of ribs the animal ribs if you're just into the animal ribs mm, then of course you're probably gonna have a poor idea it sounds silly it sounds really silly right that that from from adam's rib physical rib rib but that word, tzala'ah, 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 right, tzala'ah, that word right there means so much more than rib. And actually, it only has been associated with this idea of rib because when the translators were translating it, they couldn't really figure out, because of the lack of scientific knowledge, what it really referred to. So they said that he took a rib, right, from the man. Right? But then we look at that particular word in its other Hebrew usages, right? we then can make the connection right? chromosomally and scientifically. This means that according to the Hebrew scripture, there was an innate, an inner, an innate knowledge. Right? There was an innate knowledge, scientifically speaking. So even in the verse that might seem simple, especially in the translation that so God created man in his own image and image of God created he him, male and female created he them, might seem overly simpli simplistic. However, if we look at the scientific aspect, right? If God was she, right? If God was she and she created she in her own image after her own likeness, she would not be able to, scientifically speaking, if the science is consistent, she would not be able to create right, male and female. She would be able to create female and female. Right? Because from the male, right, from the male comes that particular determination. Through the male comes that particular determination. Right, so scientifically speaking, just looking at the science of it, it's possible for a woman to give birth, scientifically speaking, to a woman because of like and like, the principle, scientific principle of like and like. But because of the scientific principle of like and like, it will be not possible for her to produce a male without the seed of a male and remember that Elohim according to the scripture is considered a male but in the male scientifically speaking is the male the Y and is the X so let's read the verse like this and Elohim created man in his image in the image of Elohim created he him Y and X created he them Y and X 
So Elohim being he has Y and X, right? Created man in his image. So can we see how man reflects the image, even scientifically, in the basic pattern of the science of his creator of him? Male and female, Y and X, he created them. So when we get to Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 2, right? In Genesis chapter 2, and it says, And Yahweh Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. This is what we get right here, right? This is what we get right here in translation now I, i'm reading one of my old bibles here i hadn't looked at in a while and i had an interesting note right here let's just go and look up what this note says and see if it's really related to here i hadn't looked at this book in a while right let's see 11 and 5 boom here we go ecclesiastes is ecclesiastes 11 and 5 so in this old bible one of my first bibles over 20 something years ago still have a lot of the notes from study here i'm looking at this right here and next to genesis chapter 2 verse 21 we have ecclesiastes 11 and 5 right and when we look at ecclesiastes 11 and 5 this is what 11 and 5 says as thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Even so, thou knowest not the works of Elohim, who maketh all. It's interesting here because now in looking at this particular area of one of my old study Bibles and the notes that we wrote, you know, in the text and everything, you know, with what we were discovering and we came across as we move on, right here 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 right as we move on right here i have another note and it's next to verse 10 where it says therefore remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh for childhood and youth are vanity and in the margin i put genesis 2 and 21 and then next to the fifth verse that says as thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child even so thou knowest not the works of elohim who maketh all next to that i put genesis chapter 2 verse 21. so here i gotta look over this right here it is very very interesting because in verse um six next to verse six I put Genesis chapter 1 and 5 and then Genesis chapter 1 and 4 and then next to Ecclesiastes 11 and 7 I put Genesis 1 and 3 then coming down to Ecclesiastes 11 and 8 I put Genesis 1 and 2. This is very interesting because here it says after the verse we just read where it says even so thou knowest not the works of Elohim who maketh all. Verse 6 says in the morning sow thy seed and in the evening withhold not thine hand for thou knowest not whether whither shall prosper either either this or that or whether they both shall be alike good. So that we put next to Genesis 1 and 5, 1 and 4. Next verse, truly, truly the light is sweet and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. There we put Genesis 1 and 3. But actually when we think about it, the sun wasn't a visible in Genesis until like the fourth day. But let's go on, right? Here, because we talk about the light is sweet, right? So we would have actually Genesis 1 and 3 and then also um, the fourth day. Right. But here in the next verse, it says, but if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. Next to this, we put Genesis chapter one, verse two. So I'm just sharing this right here because in going over this with y'all, I just noticed in this notes that I had another note that I had not come across you know, for a while since I used this particular Bible here and Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 5 is indeed a very interesting and so far from our review here, it is appropriate, right? Because here we're comparing Genesis chapter 2 verse 21 where it says Yahweh Elohim closed 
cause, cause a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. The link, Ecclesiastes 11 and 5. Because what we're getting in this particular scene right here with Adam is actually a, a type of birth. In a sense, we could say that Adam, like although it is, it is usual, right, it is normal and patterned for a woman, right, to give birth to a man, right, for a woman to give birth to a man, or, or you know, a male or a female, right, a male or a female. Here we find a scene that if we study it and look at it from what it is telling us, it is basically saying right here that Adam was the first, according to the narrative here, right, to give birth to the woman. So, of, of births. I'm talking about of births. As we know and qualify births today, you know, male and a female. Because remember what Adam also says, right? Adam, and when we say Adam here, remember that in Genesis chapter 2, we're at the seventh day. In Genesis chapter 1, where it says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, we have actually the sixth day. So we have the sixth day where we have Elohim creating man in his image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Y and X, male and female created he them. And then we have in Genesis chapter 2. Right? And also pay attention to the words create and made. The words create and made in Hebrew are two different words. So sometimes people loosely might use one word or the next word. You know, we might do that. But the Hebrew, we say the writers and the Hebrew wisdom is not like that. When there's a specific word, it is to bring forward a specific point, a specific knowledge, a specific point is being made by the word used right there now we have man coming along right and it says it says it says right here and yahweh elohim right right here where, where does it say um is it out of the out of the ground right verse 9 genesis chapter 2 verse 9 and out of the ground made yahweh elohim to grow every okay no that's a tree right there where's oh no it was actually verse 7 Sauna, right? Yahweh Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul, right? Man became a living soul, right? Notice even there it says man, right? And it first identifies the man, according to the King James Version, as being Adam twice in verse 19. Twice. Prior to that, we have man, and we can assume. Now, once we're not studying the Hebrew, are assuming, right? But the significance is this. We first were made to believe in talking about Adam. We're talking about Genesis chapter 2, Adam. That's what we're talking about, chapter 2, Adam. Because in chapter 1, you'll notice that it says, male and female created he them. But it says that Elohim created man. In his image. In the, now notice this. Elohim in the singularity. The verb created is singular. Though Elohim is powers. Plural. The verb is singular. So the Elohim. The God powers. He created man. Singular. In his image. In the image of Elohim. Created he him. So you see the like and likeness. Male and female. Y and X. Created. Notice the word created right created he them he them so we go from a he creating him right singularity singularity right and then it has male and female right in this binary right this duality this binary created singularity the binary so the singularity created the binary. But in the singularity, being he is already Y and X is already the binary or that duality is already in he. 
because in the male, right, we have X and Y. In the female, we have X and X. People can do all sort of somersaults around it, but it's very clear that we have a natural science that proves that point, right? A natural science. And then also we can see that by studying the creation in the scriptures, in the Hebrew scripture, through the translation, but going to the Hebrew for points of reference, we see that somehow the writers of the Hebrew scripture understood this truth that was only maybe fully proven, at least in our times, fairly recently. It's only fairly recently that they have gotten into the science of, you know, chromosomes and really breaking it down. It's not thousands of years ago that we hear them talking about X and Y chromosomes. Is that facts or not? Thousands of years ago, did he talk about X and Y chromosome? We don't hear nothing. If you can point out thousands overtly, but here in the scripture, we can see covertly there is this knowledge. The translation is consistent with the best of our scientific knowledge of today concerning genetics, concerning DNA, and concerning chromosomes. And those contradictions or errors, right? have been imagined mainly because of errors or misconceptions based on faulty translations and based on counterfeit Christian doctrines that have been based on faulty interpretations of questionable, let's say faulty interpretations of questionable translations. Right? Because we're not saying that the ones who translated back then, they had an intent to deceive. No, they was working with the best that they had. This was supposed to be a stepping stone, right? But people are stumbling over the stepping stone. The KJV Bible is a stepping stone. People are stumbling over it, either totally dismissing it or totally embracing everything about it, right? Going from one extreme to the next extreme, right? Now, when we go further right here where it says in Genesis, we're still in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2, giving more emphasis to chapter 2 to answer our initial question. Did Adam, right, did Adam have a father and mother? Right, let's go right here. Right, let's go right here. Did Adam have a father and mother? Right, so let's go in this right here and let's scroll down right here. Boom. You see this verse, verse 24. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh now let's stop for a moment right here let's pause for a moment right here adam you see the h376 right or the man that's ish notice the word the word is ish the word is not even Adam. The word is Ish. The word is Ish. All right. Once again, let's emphasize the word is Ish, which brings a whole new concept when we talk about Jew Ish and this Ish and that Ish. Because you're looking at even the Jew Ish and thinking that the Ish, right, is something inferior because you're not understanding that the primary for us should be the Hebrew. Right? So it's understandable the ish as a, as a suffix. But here we have the ish, right? The ish, right? The ish as a noun. Let's scroll down right here. The ish as a noun. You can see the ish is a noun masculine. Right? So this is another proof here that where it says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 24, Therefore shall a man... Adam is saying, therefore shall a ish. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He didn't say, therefore shall Adam. Therefore shall an Adam. He says, therefore shall an ish. Proving the point that everywhere we find man in the scripture is not always speaking about Adam. We can show you scripture that shows that there's a contrast. There's a contrast between Adam and Ish. That Adam usually refers to the lower man, right? When it's talking about um, both low and high, rich and poor. By saying low in the Hebrew is B'nai Adam, B'nai, 
sons of or children of Adam. And when it says higher man, B'nai Ish, B'nai Ish, the same word here that we find in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. All right now, let's scroll back right here and, and notice right here in verse 23. In verse 23, this is after now the Isha, the Isha. Notice she is she is called Isha. See, none of this comes out in the English. So we understand, and we're forced to understand. So when we're hearing some of these crazy debates back and forth and, and, and ones are asking good questions, but often having poor tools to get the right and the righteous answer, right? And that means in order to have the right tools, we also have to be the right workmen. That's why I said study to show yourself approved to Elohim as workmen, as workmen. There's a work to be done. So if we're talking about the Bible and seeking to bring out the Bible, like, and to build. People talk about building, right? Somebody who build a construction worker, a craftsman, or somebody else that does building or construction, they need skills and they need tools. You need tools and you need skills in order to build, right? And they're using these same faulty, men are using the same faulty tools and skills like the King James Version translation and their little bit of wit and wisdom. And see, at best, at best, ones are being clever, but not really being wise. They're being clever and slick, right? But there's some things that, you know, and they're basing it on what the, the best of their ignorance can produce, right? So here, what we're seeking to show ones is the, the source code. We're going to the source code right here. When we go to the Hebrews, going to the source code, right? Chabarim, uh, Chabarim, Talmudim. Right, because we know we don't get the views that some of the other ones get. Not not right now, right here. But we're focusing on the Talmudim, the disciples, our fellows, right here. Right, for for I and I to get the truth, so we can you know purify the oil in the apothecary. Right, because dead flies and the oils cause you know cause the the ointment to stink. Right, and we had a lot of stinking, right, a lot of stinking thinking. Right, that concerns the Bible amongst ones who said they're of Hebrew, that we're Hebrews, we're Israelites, and they're making this seem strange as though our best knowledge is limited to the King James Version. It's not. The King James Version, once again, is a stepping stone. But many of our well-meaning, you know, black Hebrew, Israelites, other, you know, brothers and sisters, you know, growing. It's, 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 it's growing. Hopefully it's growing pains. And we, and we do hope the best, even for those that some of them that we disagree with categorically, principally, a lot of their, you know, dogmas and doctrines that are not consistent with the wisdom of the scripture. We still encourage the growth of our people because this is necessary. We have to go through these growing pains. All right. So let's let's wrap up right here for a moment right here because there's more on this we're just focusing on one of the primary questions right here right did adam right did adam have a father and a mother right and also we address right here why elohim is not she i think that maybe have to be part of the um the the subtitle right so the, the first part of the question did Adam have? Well, here, Adam said, notice it says right here, Adam. Notice Adam is the H120, right? H120, right? This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called womb man because she was taken out of man. Because what? She shall be called womb man. Why shall she be called womb man? Because she was taken out of man. Notice man. You notice man right there? What's the word? Those checking out the video that can see the visual, the exhibit in front of your face. All right? The word man, what's the H word? What's the H? It's H376. What's the 376? It's Ish. Uh-oh. It's Ish. So what is Adam? What is Adam saying right here? So what verse is it? Verse 24. Right, verse is it verse 24? No, verse 23 it says, Wayomer ha Adam. Right? Wayomer ha Adam. So here in the Hebrew, when it says Wayomer, and he said, Ha Adam, and the Adam said, right? 
Wayomer Ha'adam. And the Adam said. Here we get an Adam said. So sometimes in the scripture we have Adam. Here we have Adam with the definite article Ha. Ha Adam. Wayomer Ha'adam. Zot. Ha Pa'am. Ha Pa'am. Etzem. May it's a my may it's a my it's a may it's a my so he says zot this is now zot hapa am zot this she now zot in the hebrew is this but it's this in the she sense zot is like saying this concerning something that is feminine if i say ze ze is concerning something that's that's masculine so here, while you murder Adam, and the Adam said, Zot hapa'am, this she hapa'am, now, like hapa'am, the once, the ha, the pa'am, the once, Zot hapa'am, the once, et am bone, may it am I, bone from my bone, et am may at am I, et am may at am I, oh, Basar mi basari mi basari and flesh of my flesh o basar mi basari o and basar and flesh me from basari from my flesh lizot lizot for this she for this she lizot ye Yikare, yikare, yikare. This, for this to be called Isha. It says right here, for this to be called Isha. Now we're reading our hard copy right here. But let's bring up right here, 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 so you can see the Hebrew. Here's the Hebrew that we're looking at right here. Here's the Hebrew. All right, so we have the Tanakh right there. We're looking at the Hebrew. And we're up to this right here where where he's saying that she shall be called right here she shall be called isha you see isha is the h802 and isha right you see isha isha is a woman wife female the opposite of man you see isha a woman also can be a wife so the word can refer to a woman in a general sense but often also as a wife i would say um ishti ishti oseti isheti Ishti, Isha Shali. I'm saying my woman, that is to say my wife, right? So you see right here, notice what it says down here. I want you to see this right here. This is what causes confusion too in Bible studies and understanding. Here it's saying this word Isha, which is a female form of Ish. So what Adam is basically saying right here, here, here in Genesis chapter 2, verse 23 right is that she shall be called isha lizot ikare isha ki for may ish may from ish from man la ko ha la ko ha zot right la ko ha zot from man right from the ish he's saying she shall be called isha because from ish she was taken she was taken out right she was gotten she was acquired la koha la koha zot la koha zot she was taken out of she was taken out of man but notice what it says often unexpressed in english so the h802 which is isha which is isha right right here this is um um nashim is the plural nashim is like say womb man isha right we have isha it's the Isha, right? Isha, right? Woman, wife, female, right? This is often how this word is applied and understood. So what Adam is saying right here concerning, right, concerning the woman, right, is very, very interesting, right? Because he's saying that because she came from Ish, he didn't say that she came may Adam. He didn't say ki me adam la koha zot no he says ki me ish me ish for from ish for from ish ki me ish from ish 
because she came out from Ish. She shall be called Yikare Isha. See, this is often lost in translation. And this is this is significant. It's close. The English has a close um a close ring to it. What do we mean by the English has a close ring to it? Okay, it's this verse right here. It's these verses right here where it says, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, woe man, woo man, because she came out of man. So the, the link, the closeness of the comparison is woo man, right? Woo man comes from man. Think about it. We have man and woo man even the woo the woe remind me of the hebrew when we say in the ancient hebrew we say like ooh ooh like ooh basar ooh basar woo basar ooh basar mi basari and flesh from my flesh right ooh basar ooh basar ooh basar ooh basar ooh and so we have woo we have man and man but man and a unique kind of man that according to scripture is called isha so he's saying isha comes from ish here is saying woo man come from man so we can see a little bit of the rhyme the similarity of the word like man ish woo man isha isha right to distinguish but notice that it is the the adam right it is the adam why your mer Ha Adam that is saying these things. He's saying that this, speaking of she, is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called Isha, woman, because she was taken out of Ish, may Ish. So Adam at this point in time already saw himself as a higher man. Because remember, all this is before the fall. All this is before the, 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 the disobedience. Right? All this is before the ignorance, the uckery, the sin, the lack. All this is before they were caught lacking. Why? Right? They were caught lacking. All this occurred before they were caught lacking. Right? After they were caught lacking, right, it's a whole different, right? It's a whole different, it's a whole different situation. Right? Now there's another question right here, here, here. Um, just to try to sum this up right here, because um, the, the question is still there. Because one of them say, "Well, you still didn't answer the question. Um, who was Adam's? Did Adam have a father, right, and mother? Well, the key right here is this verse right here, where it says the next verse sets it up. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave to his wife." And they shall be one flesh. Notice he's using the same word here, ish. He didn't say, therefore shall a Adam. See? When we look in Genesis, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. There it says Adam. There it says Adam. So in Genesis chapter 1, when we have man, right? Especially in the concerning the creation of man, we have Adam. In Genesis chapter 2, as we have it here in Genesis chapter 2, verse 23, and here in verse 24, right, we have the man, the underlying Hebrew word is Ish. And Adam is speaking about Ish. So here we need to prove the low and high all together. Low and high. This is the next point we need to prove. Low and high. Right, low and high, right, all together, right, all together now, all together. That's that's why I remember this particular verse right here, right here, low and high. Surely men of low degree, right, low and high. Hear this, okay, that was the next verse. Hear this, um, um, rich and, okay, okay, small and great, small and great. I'm still trying to remember the King James version of it. Right, small and great. Right, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see right here. Okay, hear this. All right. Um, give me one moment. This is a low and high because it might be the KJV translation or it might be the Hebrew translation. Both low and high. Let Let's go right here. Let's go. Let's go low and high. Sometimes just look up the basic word and go through all the 
all the boom there it goes there it go okay rich and poor okay both low and high you see right there genesis not genesis <laughs> so nah forgive uh yes sir psalm 49 and 2 let's go right here psalm 49 and 2 this is this psalm right here to chief musician a psalm for the sons of korah hear this all ye people give ear all ye inhabitants of the world right here both low and high rich and poor all together or poor together here says together i think in the hebrew translation of saul says it all together okay you see the verse right there let's look at low you see what says low low it has two words ben ben means son right son like son of right and then the next word is adam in the hebrew these two words is bene bene adam so the low the people the low man is adam the high man is ben bene bene son of ish you see it right there son of ish let's bring this up in the hebrew so ones and ones can see the hebrew compare the page right here here's the fuller full of the verse right here from psalm 49 and 2 it says gam bene adam gam bene ish yahad ashir we ebyon ashir we ebyon ashir we ebyon rich and poor but here 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 we have this right here all right let's go right here so here the first part let's just highlight this right here these two words right here is low so the king james version actually understands the hebrew sense of this well but the translation i'm trying to highlight these two words right here but sometimes the highlighter let's see if we can do this down here I'm trying to highlight okay let's do it up here right here we have okay highlighter highlighter there we go right there yeah you see right there so it's highlighted bene adam so when it says pay attention hear this all ye people my I, oh, oh, that, that's a, the NET is a poor one the, the one right above it right there where it says um, both low and high rich and poor Gam, Gam in the Hebrew means also Gam, Bene sons of Adam so the sons of Adam is considered the low man and Gam, Bene Ish right? the, the sons of Ish is higher man so from the Hebrew understanding there's a difference in the type of man. Adam is the basic man. Adam is like humanity in general. And Ish is like specific, specific humanity. It's like when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, he separated to all the sons of Adam by right, their inheritance according to the number of the children of Israel. So here he distinguishes between general humanity, Adam, right, and his chosen humanity for the higher purpose, Yisrael or the Ish. And we have this brought out right here. But this is something that, without going into the Hebrew studies, it's almost, it's not possible to discern easily. Without going into the Hebrew study, cause all you're reading in the English is, is both, you read in the English right here, both low and high, rich and poor together you would not have any idea that it's really saying also the sons of Adam and the sons of Ish. The sons of Adam, the sons of Ish. Now, why we emphasize that right there, because in the Psalm, Psalm 49 and 2, right, Song of Korah, notice how there's a consistent Hebrew sense that if we understand the sense in Psalm 49 and 2 we'll be better able to understand what was being said even in Genesis Genesis chapter 2 right remember it's Adam saying so it's almost as though when the woman it's like it's like now he's becoming more complete in the sense of remember in the beginning Elohim created Right? Said, so let us make man in our image after our likeness. And he created him, he, him, right? In his image after his likeness, right? And X, Y, and X created he, them. Now, that was on the sixth day. We come to the seventh day. Notice we come to the seventh day. When we come to the seventh day, <laughs> what happens on the seventh day? On the seventh day, it's interesting. 
because really we're coming to the eighth day. Actually, in Genesis chapter two, it mentions the seventh day, but when we get the key working of Elohim now to bring forth an Adam in a sense giving birth. So Adam, according to the scripture, we can say that man, right, or Adam gave birth first, but then after that, right, we say that all the children come to the woman. But that brings us to another question. Did Adam have a mother? And we say, yes, Adam had a mother, right? And then some say, well, if Adam had a mother, what was her name? We can give you the name, right? We'll give you the name right now. Her name was Adama. <laughs> Adama was Adam's mother. Mm. The Adama was Adam's mother. Now, there's one more point that we want to prove right here, right? That Adam, who was Adam's father? Adam's father was Elohim, was God, all right? How are we gonna prove this right here? We're gonna prove this by looking up God, right, son of God, right? By looking up God, son of God, right? And, okay, nothing, you see nothing came up right there? Boom, notice, notice this right here, all right? We got how many verses? Two verses, we got two verses. Keyword search, son of God and Adam. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 25, it says, And Adam knew his wife again. Ishto, Esheto, Oseto. He knew his Isha, his Eshet, his Oset. Again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For Elohim, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom I and Cain slew. Right? Now notice that's one verse, but here's our verse right here. In Luke, right, Luke, uh, in Luke chapter 3, verse 38, it says, which was or who was the son of Enos, right, Enosh. It's, it's interesting because Enos, Enosh is the other word. Enosh, Enos means mortal man. Uh-oh. Enos, so we say Enosh, Enosh, one of the words for men. So when you see this man in some places in the scripture, you have to actually go to right, with Enosh. You see, Enosh, Enosh equals man too. So Adam equals man, Ish equals man, and here we have Enos or Enosh, Enosh also equals man. So what kind of man? See, because over here it's saying, who was the son of Enos, Enosh? Who was the son of Seth? Notice this verse up here, it talks about Seth here. Where it says Adam knew his wife again in Genesis 4:25, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. And here in Luke, in Luke uh, chapter 3, verse 38, it says, Which was the son of Enos, Enosh, who was the son of Seth, who was the son of Adam. Get it? Who was the son of God? Uh-oh. You see right here it says, Who was the son of God? So Adam was the son of God. Now this makes a lot of sense when it says that Yeshua Hanotri, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Robenu, Ainai Rabonai, right? Ainai Rabonai. <laughs> oh man. Okay, 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 okay. No, 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 no. Point just came to eye. Give me just a moment for a moment right here. So this makes a lot of sense right here. Right? This oh Rabboni, Yeshua HaMoshiach, he is called the last Adam. Is not Yeshua HaMoshiach called the last Adam? Is not Yeshua HaMoshiach called the son of God? Last Adam? Let's see if we have a verse on this right here. Last Adam. Let's see if it's, is it last Adam? Boom. First Corinthians 15 and 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. That's going to Genesis chapter 2, right? The last Adam, you see, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. And quickening means life-giving spirit. So the first Adam was a living soul, a living psyche. The last Adam, right, a quickening, a life-giving spirit. Now, was made, you see what it says, was made there? Everywhere you find italics is not there in the original, but it's added by the translator to give the, the, the reader a kind of a good understanding of what one who has an uh, intelligent reader of the language 
would understand. So that the italics in the KJV version, I've heard people arguing about things that are in italics and we keep saying to them that that's not even in the Hebrew, that's not in the Greek. That was just put there for people who don't speak the Hebrew or the Greek. Anyway, here, 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 a quickening. Quickening means life-giving spirit. There's a difference, the difference between spirit and soul, right, is like the difference between male and female, but they work together. The difference between spirit and soul is like the difference between male and female, but they work together. So here is saying that Yeshua HaMoshiach is the last Adam, according to what Rab Shaul, Rabbi Saul, aka the great apostle to the Gentiles, Paulo, Paulo, this is what he teaches right here, right? So notice, Yeshua is likening to Adam, and notice in the previous, right, in the previous, um, in the previous quote, right, right here, it says that Adam was the son of God. So if Adam, according to Luke's gospel, chapter 338, also the first Corinthians, right, and also what we can read in Genesis, even in translation, we have Elohim being the father. What about the mother? What about the mother? All right? Let's just sum this up right here, here, here. So when one's bite and take and not give us credit, you know, L-O-J, social, society, the line of Judah social, you know, the credit that we should, should get. Not I person, but we. This is a, this is a labor of love of the Habarim, right? Mm. Here, here, here. Let's bring up this verse right here from the ground, right? Let's just say from the ground, from the ground. Right from the ground, right? That's what we call the groundation, right? The groundation, right? Right here from the ground. Let's go right here from the ground. Boom. Okay, right here, here, here. And it says right here, here, here. Let's see. From, okay, uh, sent to him, right? Uh, therefore, the Lord God sent him for. All right. Okay, let's go over here. We're going to go right here. Let's go to Genesis, right? Boom, right? I said from, that's why I didn't show up. Okay, boom. And Yahweh, hey, Elohim, form man. Form man. What kind of man? Adam. You see, it could have said Ish. It could have said Enosh. It could have said Ish and Enosh. And see, this is why the other Yehudi, the other Jews don't have these problems because they study the linguistics of the language. This is why we're trying to, we've been encouraging over 20 something years our people to learn the language. Especially the disciples to learn the language, right? But then we recognize that that's part of the gift of the Holy Spirit, mm. right? Yeah. So Adam, we have Adam right here, right? So Adam, in a sense, so Jehovah Elohim, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Hey, Elohim, Elohim formed Adam of the dust, of the ground, of the what? The Afar, of the Afar, right? of the Adama. Notice we have Adam and we have Adama. Right? This is now to answer the mother. Mm -hmm. The mother aspect. Right? Who was the mother? Right? The ground, the earth, the ground, she. The earth we know is fertile as she. And this word Adana, Adama, right, is what part of speech is it? It's a noun feminine. Right? So Adam, right, the Lord God, right, Yahweh Elohim, to form Adam, right, and Adam is called the first man. Adam is a noun masculine, right? Ruddy, reddish brown. Ruddy, it means reddish brown. When it says red, Adam, remember, Dom in Hebrew is blood. And Aleph is the first letter, Aleph Dom. So some interpret, bring out the sense of first blood from the reddish brown ground. Like Kemet, when we talk about Kemet, Kemet, if you really look at the, the word and the context, the ground is so reddish brown, it's deeply reddish brown because it's mineral rich soil that comes from Tobia, come from Kush, come from Ethiopia, in the inundation, that reddish rich reddish brown ground, right, that is so reddish brown, it looks black. It is so deep and dark reddish brown that it looks black. So this is the idea of ruddy in the Hebrew, right? Another kind of proof positive to the melanation of the original man, right? That is the human being, 
right? The human being, right? Notice what it says right now here, it says low man, a low degree. So Adam is a low degree, right? Or at least Adam has become a low degree. But even the Adam there was saying that he was identifying himself as Ish. Notice, he was looking at himself from a higher level. Why? Because the, the breath of life, that breath, had been breathed into him and he became a living soul. So psychically, he was aware. This is all before right, the disobedience and the eating of the forbidden fruit. The eating of the forbidden fruit and that disobedience caused stupidity. Right? That's what caused the fall. A psychical, a spiritual, a mental my, um, we could say even in the earth sciences a fall right? because of the significance of the role of the human being from the very first intent being created in right, the image and after the likeness right? and we speak of Adam, the human being we're speaking from the beginning of male and female but then as we go forward to the responsibility for this fall, we place it where the scripture places it squarely on Adam. Right? Because the man was not in transgression, but the man was in disobedience. The woman was transgressed, but the man sinned and disobeyed. And to whom more is given, more is required. So after all of this, we can see the fall to Adam as that low degree and becoming general man, but the higher man is the Ish. So here it says, and Yahweh Elohim form man of the dust of the ground. So form Adam, right, of the Adama. And Adama, once again, speaking of the ground, right, part of speech, right, it is a noun feminine. Right, noun feminine. Look at look at some of the use. The soil from the general redness, the country, the earth, the ground. A husbandman, one who cares for the land, it's called a husbandman. Why do they call a husbandman? Right? Because the Adam is supposed to be like a husbandman. The Adam cares for the Adama. Right? In a sense, his mother, because Adam comes from the Adama, as it says right here. And Yahweh Elohim form, key word, form man of the Afar, from the Afar of the ground, and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living, a living soul, a living psyche, a living soul. And note this right here, because he was a living soul before the fall, we can say before Genesis chapter 3, he says, she shall be called Isha, for she came out of Ish. He identified himself as a higher man because of that breath of life that caused him to become a living psyche. But then the fall, my, the fall of the soul, the loss of the soul, when to losing one's soul means that one's lose that living aspect that is connected with the breath of life. And the breath of life is like breathing in him, right? The spirit of HaTorah, right? The spirit of Torah was breathed into him, right? Because we can make the scriptural connection between the breath of life, life, and Torah, the tree of life, and the Torah, his direction, instruction. So that means he had this innate, right? This innate knowledge, right? This innate gnosis was already in him. Remember when he was created and they were created in his image after his likeness, they were very good. They were very good, right? And we already touched on the tree. If you're very good, then what can you gain from good and evil? All you gain is a demerit because you're already very good, right? Very good, right? You know, very good. Very good is like good plus. Now you're just dealing with good and evil. No, it's not good or evil. The tree wasn't called the knowledge of the good or evil, but good and evil. That means you have to take the positives and the negatives. But in the beginning, it was just the plus, plus. It was the plus because he was very, very good. So here, 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 significantly speaking, the question, who was Adam's, right? Did Adam have a father and a mother, right? And if so, who was Adam's father and mother, 
right? Who is Adam's father and mother? And why Elohim is not she? Why Elohim is he and not she? Right? And then going into the scriptural proofs to prove that Elo that that Elohim, so you can say the first son, right, was the Adam, because it said that he was right, the first Adam. And then Yeshua is likened to the last Adam. And the purpose is to restore, right, to restore man, humanity, to where he was prior to the fall by restoring Yisrael, Israel. See, because Israel's role is for all humanity, right? There's one more verse I want to share before we just get out of here, right here, here, here. One more verse right here, right? Just one more verse. Right, one more verse right here, and this the, the, this additional verse right here. Let's see if we can bring this up. Right, this additional verse right here because I, I talked on it, I mentioned it, but if you can see it for yourself, maybe not now, but later on, it might come out of some significance. Right, um, okay, divide it. Right, let's go divide it, divide it, right here, boom. It's Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8. And when the Most High, when Elion, when Elion divided to the nations the inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam. Remember we're talking about both low and high? Remember low and high? The difference between B'nai Adam and B'nai Ish? The sons of Adam. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the B'nai Yisrael. Ish, Ish, right? Yisrael, according to the number of the children of Israel, right? And let's just do this right here. Look quickly at the Hebrew right here, right? Just to fact check it. It says, Be, be hanachel elyon goyin. Be hanachel, right? When he divided, right, Elion, right here, right, when he gave Hanachil, Hanachil, bringing out the Nachal to like to get to acquire, right, to inherit, right, to almost cause to inherit. Be Hanachil, Be Hanachil, Elion Goyim, Be Hafa Rido, Bene Adam. There we go, Bene Adam, Bene Adam. Right, you see the Bene Adam. Yatsev Givulot Ami, right, the boundaries, right, the boundaries, le mispar, le mispar, right, according to the mispar, according to the numbering, right, the ciphering, the, the sefar, the cipher, mispar, mispar, le mispar, right, Bene Yisrael, according to the number of the Bene Yisrael. So as we showed Psalm 49 and 2, and the Hebrew distinguishes B'nai Adam with being low of the low degree and B'nai Ish being the high degree, it's interesting to find this particular verse right here, right, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 8, it says, and when Elion, right, when Elion divided, right, you see the, the Hanahil, you know, the Han Chel, right, divided or when he, it's not really divided in that sense, the other sense divided, but it's really like when he gave each one their particular inheritance to the Goyi, to the other nations, other than the Kadosh Goy, the Holy Goy, the Holy Nation, the inheritance, when he separated, right, the B'nai, knows the B'nai Adam, he separated, right, Parad, Farad, Right, he separated the B'nai Adam, men of low degree, the other nations. He set the bounds of the people, right, according to the Mispar, le Mispar, according to the cipher, the number of the B'nai Yisrael, according to the number of the higher man. So we can see even this pattern, this type, right, between the sons of Adam, humanity in general, and then the higher of the low degree, and in the higher degree, the B'nai Yisrael. This is why when we say to whom more is given, more is required right here, here, here. So when speaking of Adam, Wahawa, Adam, Wahewan, right? Who was their mother? Who was their father? You know, what's what? Little bit more, little more. Not even getting to the tree incident 
right now, right here, right now, right here, right now. Yes, I, Rastafari. Look them all, brothers and sisters. Check the description. Check out the podcast. Also, check out the replay. You know, listen live on demand. Right there, there, there. And right here, we're going to seal up for right now. But definitely, check out the podcast, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers. And also, like, share, and subscribe. Give thanks, Rastafari. Shalom, Chabarim. This is Yadin. And I and I approve of this message. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom. Yeshua, Shalom.